Good morning, Highland. I heard that. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We are super excited to honor our children and to give thanks for them. Um, we are going to state why we are here because it's a good idea to understand our essentials. Um, it's a good idea for new folks who are here and for folks who have been here a long time. We gather together today in this house of the Lord to sing, to give, to proclaim the gospel, and to respond to the gospel. We are so grateful to have you here. We are better when you are here. Uh, we're going to begin this morning. Um, we have a lot of fun songs planned, so please feel free to um, sing at the top of your lungs, and please do all the motions. <laughs> uh, let's begin this morning with this little light of mine. Let's stand. sharing car and then we will open our worship with a blessing thank you ken good morning announcements in the bulletin dbs is coming and it's coming very quickly upon us june the 26th to the 30th and we need workers please uh, see marjorie in score or you can uh, go onto the work church website summer mission trip july the 17th to the 23rd will be in rose hill north carolina and uh the stewardship uh, uh County subcommittee requests that you put, please put your name and envelope number on the envelopes so make it easier to record. If you have not filled out a survey, there are some in the vestibule. Please fill them out and turn them in. These are called skills, interest survey, and team service surveys. And last but not least, if you are a visitor, please look in the back pew back in front of you and fill out a visitor's card and drop it in the offering plate. Thank you for visiting with us today. Hey there, good morning. Good morning. All right, so for those of you that do not know me, my name is Shannon, and um, my family has been attending Highland um, for about 11 years now. Um, but I am sad to say a little bit that last year was the first time that I had attended the mission trip with Highland. And really, it was actually the first mission trip that I did as an adult. I had done them when I was younger, but it was the first time that I went as an adult. And I will say that I was the queen of excuses. Um, work was too busy, the kids are too small, just too much life was in the way of me 
devoting that much time to going. And so the unfortunate thing is I could actually feel the Holy Spirit nudging me and I just kept ignoring. I was like, no, but there is absolutely no way I can do this. And so I, I just really focused on all my big reasons for not going and that's what I kept my focus on. Well, last summer, uh, the Holy Spirit was about done with that and I finally made the decision to sign up um, for the mission trip. And it's really funny how the timing kind of worked itself out. You know, the kids worked out, work worked out. You know, it's funny how when you just let God, things just work out. And so we went and uh, being on the trip did not disappoint. We had a wonderful time. Um, and I think you could say God was kind of showing off that week. And so I was assigned to the VBS team there specifically, although we did a lot of other projects as um, time allowed. And um, one of my favorite stories is that when we first arrived, we had three kids signed up for VBS and they were all from the same family. And so I immediately started the week off feeling very defeated, like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so much work for very little numbers and I could already kind of feel myself kind of letting all of that get in the way. But the Lord, and I will say Paula Williams, said this just will not do. <laughs> and so we uh, stopped and we prayed. That was definitely a theme for the week. And we decided to print off flyers and we went door to door. And we ended up having 19 kids come through those doors that week. Um, and it was just such an in your face God is in control thing that, you know, it really made me stop and, and look around and see where else is he trying to do things in my life. And that if I just stopped and prayed and readjusted, you know, what else could be different and better? And so, um, as I said, we were also able to serve with the Washington Outreach Ministry where we supported their food ministry or food pantry. Um, we also did goodie baskets for the first responders. So, I mean, the week was so full of so much variety and, and ways that we could help. Um, it, it just seems like the opportunities just kept coming. Um, but what you don't expect when you go is the relationships that you will build with your church family. Um, the long talks, the prayer teams, the encouragement notes that are, are given throughout the week. Also the fun games. We've got some competitive people here at the church. So we still had fun um, with all of the, the work that we did. It really allowed me to gain perspective on my life that I did not have prior to that week. Um, so I came home, I was grateful, I was encouraged. I was really excited about the future. And I will say that the year since has been one of the most wonderful in my family's life. And so this year, we are heading to Charity Mission Camp, and it is going to be July 17th through the 23rd. Um, we will be doing a community-wide VBS, so we need all the help we can get. And even if you're like, uh, children's just not my thing, uh, there's a lot of roles that you can do with VBS, so please don't let that stop you. Um, we are also doing uh, some type of construction project. Uh, and, and whatever really the projects that the Lord has in store for us, um, there really is something for everyone. So don't let the fact that you don't know what a miter saw is stop you from signing up. Uh, I didn't even write, actually know how to spell that until yesterday. So uh, <laughs> you really don't have to be an expert at any, any one thing to, to add so much value to the mission trip. So we really would love for you to join us this year. Um, don't ignore the Holy Spirit like I did for so long because you really, you have no idea how much blessing um, can happen if you just kind of put your name on the list. So that is all I have for that. Thank you. Please join me in a prayer of blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, you have blessed this nation, you have blessed this church, you have blessed the people of this church. Now we ask that you bless those who bring their children today. We bless that they will have the words to, to raise those children with correctly in, in your name. 
We ask that those children listen to their parents and stay true in the Holy Word. Bless us as we go out into the community with mission projects that we may share the gospel. We are truly blessed in many ways. We thank you, God, for that. We thank you for giving us another day upon this earth to worship you. It's not a holy name I pray. Amen. Um, this morning for our worship, we are singing songs from childhood. If you are young and little and you know the motions to these songs, like my God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, please do those motions. And you might need to help a grown-up beside you <laughs> do the motions as well. Don't hit your neighbor when you're doing the motions, but we want all of us to be engaged in worship this morning. So let's stand and sing, My God is So Great.
Jesus, save and secure from all along. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting Lord. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, save and secure from all
scripture this morning comes from Luke and from Matthew, from Luke 18, 15 through 17. Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called to him saying, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter. And from Matthew 18, 1 through 4, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. May God add his blessing to this word.
join me in a prayer of thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for so, so many things that you have given us. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you that you believe in us, that we have a path to see you in the future. Now we bless these tithes and offerings that are giving that we may use them to further your kingdom here on earth and multiply them. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shelly, for that arrangement and choir for that song. That was beautiful. Children are welcome to stay, but if you want to take them out, this is a good time to take them out, but they're welcome to stay. They won't bother me, and uh, they may bother you. <laughs> I do recall... <clears throat> I do recall many years ago when I was a pastor down in South Carolina near uh, Darlington, and I had a, uh, a young fellow, probably three years old, he would stand up on the very, uh, not the very back row, but the next to the back row, he would stand up there, never made a peep, a little bit of squirming, but never made a peep, and his parents were just so embarrassed and so embarrassed, and I said, look, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad he's here. You can bring him. If the people behind you don't like him standing up and squirming, they can move to another seat. <laughs> but I don't think they did. And, uh, and, and going back several years later for homecoming, there was that, that young man then, you know, because he had been encouraged to come and not, you know, forced to go somewhere he didn't want to go. So I, uh, I'm very thankful. Uh, that in one of my wiser moments as a young pastor, I did something right. <laughs> How'd you like those songs? Was that fun? Was that fun? We need, we need to do some more of that. Um, I, I get to do that uh, over at, uh, Teresa knows, right? We do it over at Able to Serve once a month. So, well, Barbara, there's Barbara and a couple of others. Uh, do that over there, and I love those songs. There's so many more. I got a bunch we'll, we can teach you down the road if we want to do some more of those, Shelly. Um, matter of fact, maybe we can do with that as one of our activities this summer through the Sunday school class. Just have a bunch of children's song, have a fun time, and uh, do, teach you some new ones as well. Did it bring back any memories? Could you, could you immediately go back? I see a couple people nodding their heads, smiling. Did you go back to when you were a child having to sing those songs and when you were learning to do, to do the various motions and things like that. I really, I really enjoy the hmm and hmm and hmm. And, and before you get it, you hardly have any syllables at all coming out. And somehow we get together and we make it to the end together. But it's a lot of fun. And it's, it's okay in this kind of situation to act and feel like a child, isn't it? It's okay to act and feel like a child in this context. If you did it out at the store or at the uh, uh, restaurant or whatever, uh, p pitched a tantrum, uh, or something we wouldn't we wouldn't want that to happen, um, but in circumstances, in context, it's okay to act childlike. I won't say childish. It's not good to act childish as an adult, but to act childlike. I remember an article years ago, and I don't remember all the specifics, but but I do remember this aspect of it. You know, we have a four and a half year old granddaughter, and she sends us art. Right? I see the gullies. They have, they have art, right? Tony, you got, you got grandkids sending you. Y'all got grandkids sending you art, right? And where do we put it? We proudly put it right where everybody can see it. It's greatest thing. And, and what this article said is, you know, when they're little kids, everything's fine. Stickers are fine. Scribbles are fine. Doesn't matter whether it's in the line or outside the lines or whatever it is. It's fine. But somewhere around the third grade or so, parents and teachers and other adults start becoming discerning for little children and, and, and they're told it's not good anymore. Whether it's directly, oh, that's a terrible piece of art, it's not art, or, or whether it's just they're not posted as often anymore, something happens and children stop trying. At least most of them do. I know my artistic prowess goes to the point where I can't even draw a straight line with a ruler hardly anymore. And um, I remember a little bit older, I was trying to write some poetry and write some stories and stuff, and none of them came out the way they thought. And my teacher, you know, more stuff written on by the teacher than me, even, even in, uh, into middle school and uh, back as far as elementary school, I couldn't, I couldn't hardly write. 
Uh, if you read my handwriting, you know I can't, I still can't write um, very well, very legibly, unless I slow down and print. But, but somewhere along in there, I heard way too many times, you're just not very good at writing poetry, or you're not very good at, 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 at creative writing, and so I quit. Y'all experience any of that stuff? And what's funny is I've written more papers, 200, 300 page long things because of my degree studies, uh, but I still don't like to write because I was not encouraged to write when I was little. It's sort of like sports. I was always one of the latter ones to be picked. I, I, I wore glasses and I, I wasn't very good at baseball and I, I wasn't very good at football because I didn't want to, you know, bang up my head too much. So any, any of y'all can relate to those sorts of things? So pick the ladder on the, in, uh, in the list, you know, I'll pick everybody and then finally gets to, to Frank. I mean, I was a pretty good sized kid. Basketball I played, but, but football and baseball, they never picked me much because I couldn't catch the ball and I couldn't do stuff. But somewhere along the line, we, we're, we're having fun and we're being children and we're enjoying stuff and, and everything's well and good until there's a point somewhere in there and people say, you're not that good anymore and we quit. I think that happens in our spiritual life as well. We don't get the nourishment we need when we're young babies in Christ to try to grow. We were talking a little bit about that at the end of the class today, and we learn by trying. We learn by trying, and we're doing, we'll get to that in a little bit as we talk about being like a child today. The focus is not for children, but it's, it's about children or about us being like children. We continue in the things that we are encouraged in, whether it's sports or music or theater or, or uh, military. Um, like my son, you know, I tried to encourage him in ROTC in high school, no, but finally went back in college, so I'm glad of that. We, we, we do the things that we're encouraged in and we stop the things that we're not encouraged in. Think about uh, how many folks you know who are willing to pray publicly. Well, I could never pray like him or her. Or, or I, I can't read the Bible because I can't pronounce those names. Now, those of you in my Sunday school class a couple of weeks ago, what did we do? <laughs> we opened up to uh, the judges and read the various names of places and people and, and all this kind of stuff. It was crazy. Nobody could pronounce everything. But how do we learn? By trying. How do we learn to walk? By falling. By getting the boo-boos on our knees and on our hands and maybe on our heads, right? My son was, was, was less than a year old and he was walking across the floor. He started walking about nine, oldest one. About nine months, he was walking across the floor and, and, and almost got to me and he, and he fell and he hit and he split his forehead right here on one of his first split. But it didn't stop him from walking. And I certainly wasn't going to stop him from walking just because he may have had a boo-boo on his head. He did have to get stitches. Daddy didn't catch him in time. <laughs> but we must do everything possible to encourage people in life and particularly in their spiritual growth, I keep saying as a church we need to create opportunities and environments in which we can foster growth. You, you've, heard, you've heard the saying, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink. Well, that's the idea, but we, we want to create every possible opportunity that you can drink spiritually and grow not so much that you're going to stand up here and preach or you're going to stand up here and read scripture in front of the whole crowd or you're going to pray, but that you're going to start feeling comfortable, I hope, to pray in smaller groups or, you know, just to, to pray and to talk and to read scriptures. We should all be willing to do that as followers of Jesus Christ. Yes, some are extroverted and they could, you know, they could talk to a tree. Others are introverted and it's hard to get a word out in the privacy of home, maybe. But um, we need to encourage that. I, I want us to, to think about it as we need to be humble like a child, which we read earlier this morning, or Ken read 
this morning. I want us to think about being childlike and, and being willing to do the things that we need to. Let's turn in scriptures. I hope you have your Bibles with you because I want you to see um, the context of these things. Uh, it, it, I, I was fascinated when I started looking these up. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are often called the synoptic gospels because you, you know what optic means. It's something to do with your sight and your eyes. And sin, sympathy, sync, all those things mean with. And, and it means that you can see with uh, together. You can see them together. And, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke are, are often overlapped in the same way. And this very passage in all three of those gospels is followed by the rich ruler, the rich young man. It's just fascinating. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Well, why would that be? Uh, Luke actually precedes it uh, differently. They, he adds in some different things. He adds in the, the prayer of the persistent widow. This lady was willing to act foolish in front of, front of uh, the judge and just go to the judge over and over and over again until he said, well, I don't care about God and I don't care about people, but I'm going to take care of her because she's being crazy. She's going to cause me so much headache. She was willing to humble herself and actually, in a sense, make a fool of herself before this man so that he would take care of her. And then in the latter part, uh, uh, before our passage, beginning in verse 9, the Pharisee and the tax collector. You remember that story? The Pharisee, oh God, I'm glad I'm not like this tax collector over here. You know, just bragging about himself, how good he is. And the tax collector goes, in humility, God, I'm not even worthy to, for you to listen to me. And then Jesus says, let the children come to me. Do you get the connection? Let the children come to me. And then in the passage after this, which we're not going to read, but in the passage after this, the guy comes up and he says, hey, what do I need to do to get into heaven? Because I'm a good boy. <laughs> I've done all the Ten Commandments. I've checked the boxes. But Jesus just said, let the little children come to me. As they were bringing, if you back up one verse, they were bringing the kids to him, and, and the disciples were going, no, 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 he doesn't need the kids. We need, he needs to talk to the adults. Go back to verse 15, please. He doesn't need, need them. And Jesus says, no. So it says, they were bringing the infants, not just the kids, but the infants. They're bringing their babies to him. And it's a very different word here in the Greek, the infants, the little ones to him, that he might just touch them. And the believer, the believer said, no, leave Jesus alone. He's got too important stuff to do, too much to do. Jesus says, no, wait. Wait, let, let the children, let these little ones come to me. And do not hinder them. For to such, to, to people like these, belongs the kingdom of God. Not like us who think we know everything. Not like us who can cross the T's and dot the I's. But to the children, go to the next verse. And he carries it on as if we, he, 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 the disciples didn't get the point. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like one of these little children won't enter it. You know, when you're, when you're trying to share Jesus with somebody... And, and, and they get to the point where it's like, I, I just can't understand it. It makes no sense. And maybe they go down the path, and this is where a lot of us go, oh, I'm afraid this might happen. They go down the path and they ask questions and you go, you know, I just don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I remember talking with my brother many years ago, and, and we, I answered every question I could for a point, and I finally said, I, I'm not going to know all your answers to all your questions. But there comes a point we've got to be like a child. We've got to humble ourselves and be like a child. Not, not like the rich young man who can check the box and do all the right things, but like an infant, a little baby who can't do anything for himself and go, I'm yours. Amen. I'm yours. I mean, think about it. They're bringing the babies. What can a baby do for itself? Absolutely nothing. You're not even sure what you're supposed to do. They start crying, right? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Let's see. Try to feed them. Nope. 
check the diaper. Nope, not that. What is, oh, maybe they're tired, right? Maybe they want to be held. Nope, still crying. What, right? You've been there, right? I see some of these newer mothers. It's like, what, what do I do now? They can't even tell you. And yet, they need your help. And that's what Jesus is saying. We need to be willing to throw ourselves into God's care. Abandon all things and come to God like a child, like a baby. Because if we have to understand everything about Jesus, how God sent His Son, God Himself, into the flesh and to live on earth without ever sinning, if we have to understand that, how is that God? How is that man? How is He both? And he never sinned, and then he went to the cross, and then he died, and then, whoa, he rose again. We have to understand all of that. You'll never get there. We cannot understand all that thing. We have to simply trust it. And you know what's interesting? As we trust it, it begins to make more sense. Again, we don't understand everything aspect of it, but it begins to make sense. We start connecting dots. We start understanding, and the more we read, and the more we ask questions, and the more we learn, and the more we live it out, the more it makes sense, and the more we trust. Just like a little baby, the more that that child is loved and caressed and taken care of, food, clean diaper, dry diaper, and rest, playtime when they start getting old enough the more that child begins to trust the caretaker, usually mother or father or someone like that, adopted parent. And God is our Father who takes care of us. But we need to be family to nurture and encourage one another. We need to be like children. Look, look at, at, at Matthew chapter 18. This is an interesting parallel because there's several passages that are very similar to the one I read from Luke. Not only the three virtually identical ones in Matthew, Mark, and Luke that I was talking about that are followed by the rich young man uh, who tries to earn his way into heaven. But, but Jesus says a very similar phrase, but it's in a, a different situation. So he's, he's traveling around and, and Galilee and his disciples come up to him and, and the disciples came to Jesus and um, in this particular instance they say who's the greatest in the kingdom of God kingdom of heaven and so Jesus calls a child into their midst and in the Greek word is actually a little child it's not just the normal word for, for a child like an elementary school kid it's a, it's a little child and he, he calls this little child and he puts the little child in his midst, in their midst. And he says, truly I say to you, unless you turn it and become like this little child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is he contrasting with in this passage? Saying the same thing, you got to be like a child, but he's contrasting it with us who want to be the greatest. His 12 disciples, oh, I want to sit on his right hand, I want to sit on his left hand. Most of the time when they're mumbling about this, Jesus is going, what is it you were talking about on the way? <laughs> and he calls their hand and, well, you know, I, who's the greatest? And, and Jesus says in Mark, he says something different. He said, I didn't come to, to be served as the one in charge I came to serve. But he doesn't do that here. He, he says very clearly, it's not about who's the greatest. It's about who's willing to come to God like a child. Who, who's, and go on to the next verse. And he clarifies what he means for that. Because he goes from the very literal illustration of the child that he's holding in his lap maybe or in the midst of them. And he goes on to say more uh, um, figuratively because whoever humbles himself like a child, that's how you become the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Not the one who who thinks he or she is great, not the one who puts him or herself in a position of authority or leadership, but the one who humbles him or herself like a child. That's how 
we become the greatest. That's how we learn to grow. I, I, I'm amazed when, we're, when I'm around my daughter. Um, you know, I've got, I got a lot of letters after my name as far as degrees. I've studied the Bible a lot. I've learned the languages. I've got all that stuff down. I got this right here. But my daughter has this spiritual sensitivity about her that just really challenges me in a positive way to learn. This is my daughter. And I've told her this. I have to humble myself as father and learn from my daughter because she knows Jesus in a way I don't know him. Does that make sense? Amen. We cannot approach God as one who knows. We have to approach him as one who wants to know, Amen. who is learning, who is coming as a humble child, not thinking, I'm great. I'm pastor, I'm school teacher, I'm deacon, I go on mission trips, I do all the things, I tithe, I give more than a tithe. Whatever it is that you think is, is right, but rather I come as a humble child to God. And that's how we learn to pray. And that's how we learn to speak on behalf of God, to share Jesus to be a blessing to others. Remember, begin with prayer. Listen, eat, share, uh, serve, and share your story and his story. Uh, and, and we begin simply. Carmen has a phrase that I love, and, and she helps me remember that. Um, we had graduation, by the way, um, you can see. <laughs> and, and her phrase is, short people, short prayers. And so I had to pray before and after uh, our four graduation services on Thursday, four graduation services on Thursday, and we lost a few balloons. They'll be down in a couple of weeks, maybe. <laughs> and, and, and I had to remember short prayers because there's short people in there. And when we start as a short person spiritually, as a young child spiritually, our prayers can be short. Thank you. Forgive me. I love you. Things like that. Doesn't have to be fancy. Short people, short prayers. New believers, short prayers. How about that? And we grow as we learn to walk, as we try things out. Just like walking. We have a four and a half year old granddaughter and an 18 month old grandson, and, and both of them are pretty good size for their ages, but the, the grandson was slow to walk. You know, nine months came when his dad learned to walk, nothing. 10, 11, 12, 13, they started taking him to, to physical therapy because he didn't, he didn't care to walk. He's just sitting there. <laughs> He's like, everything's going fine. He probably had a big sister that helped, you know. It's like, well, you're, you're, you're supposed to walk about now. You're supposed to walk. Do you think they said, nope, you can't walk now. You're too old. When he finally started to stand up and hold on to the table, he said, oh, you're too old. You missed the time. You can't walk. No, they encouraged it. It didn't matter whether he was at 12 months or 9 months or I don't remember how old he was. But, I mean, he walks fine now. He's starting to you know, run and do all the normal things, but he just didn't want to walk for a while. But when he did, they encouraged him. And some of us take a little while to be willing to go, you know, okay, I'll read Scripture. I don't let that happen in my class. Everybody in my class reads scripture, right? <laughs> Y'all know that. Everybody reads scripture. I haven't asked everybody to pray. As a matter of fact, I said, who's willing to pray today? I said, who's willing to pray? Because not everybody's there. But when they are, I'm going to encourage them to take that step. And, and, and they might fall down and do a boo-boo on their knee, right, spiritually speaking. But that's what we need to do with everyone and each of us in those areas where we're, we're maybe unwilling to share Jesus yet. Well, try a step. Try a step. One step. One step. And then another step. And another step. And before you know it, you'll be walking. Whatever that walking is. And we'll be walking together. And we'll cheer you on from the sidelines. And we'll help you walk and we will help you read, and we will help you pray, 
And we will help you speak as you grow in your faith from a baby to a more mature, I won't say a mature, (laughs) but a more mature growing disciple of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to take the next step with me? Whatever it is. Yes? Yes. Yes. Boy, we're not going to grow very fast. (laughs) Thank you, whoever said yes. Are you willing to take the next step, whatever it is for you? Yes. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, before you, we're just a bunch of children. (laughs) You call us your children, and that is just such an amazing thing. Thank you for loving us so much. That we can come to you like an infant, not knowing how to do anything when we come to you. Help us to hunger and thirst like a baby does, to grow and to try new things. Help us, Lord, to bless our neighbors as we try those new things. Help us to go from this place and take whatever it is for each individual here, but help us to take that next step. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. God is so good. If you'd like to respond in some way, I'd love to pray with you or talk with you, or you can come and just pray up here while we sing. Y'all can sit down for a minute. Thank you. Well, please come on up. Can you get up? (laughs) Barbara has come, said it's time to come back full. Be a member. Take that step. (laughs) See, that was easy. Sometimes it's hard, but we got to take the next step. That's what she said to me. It's time for me to take the next step. I got to take the next step. I got to reconnect fully with Highland Baptist Church. And so let's see, where, where, are, are you a member somewhere else now? That's right. Triangle Baptist. Oh, right down there on, yeah, right down the road from here. So thank you for coming back. I hope that you will greet her. Uh, do we have a, a motion to accept her? She's coming back. So move. There was more than one, so we'll take a second. I, I'm, I'm going to let y'all 
Show your approval by standing. How's that? You ready to go? <laughs> standing, will you meet, it, meet at the back door? We do need to finish some of this, all right? Would you meet them, greet them at the back door as they come out? I'll be right back there as well. <laughs> Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for um, just a reminder that we've got to come humbly to you. And whatever the next step is, we need to take that. And uh, we all know what you're move, doing and saying in our lives, what that next step is. So, Lord, help us to take the next step. In Jesus' name, amen.